The bridge linking the Crimean Peninsula to Russia has been damaged in a reported blast. Russian officials have said that two people have been killed. The Kerch Bridge was opened in 2018 and it, it enables road and rail travel between Russia and Ukraine's Crimean Peninsula, which Russia annexed in 2014. In October last year, the bridge was partially closed following a major explosion. Russia has halted its participation in the Black Sea Grain Deal. The deal was brokered by Turkey and the United Nations in July last year. However, it expired today after being renewed several times. The deal reportedly enabled the export of more than 32 million tons of grain from Ukraine. Russian President Vladimir Putin has said that Russia has a sufficient stockpile of cluster bombs. Putin added that Moscow reserves the right to use the cluster munitions if such bombs are deployed against its forces in Ukraine. A few days ago, Ukraine said that it had received cluster bombs from the United States. The US said that these munitions have been given to compensate for a shell shortage faced by Ukrainian forces. Cluster munitions are banned in a hundred nations, but not in the US, Russia or Ukraine. South Korean President Yoon suk yeol met his Ukrainian counterpart Vladimir Zelensky in Kyiv. Yoon promised to send a bigger batch of military supplies. He also pledged $150 million in military aid. Yoon's visit comes after he travelled to Lithuania and Poland where he expressed solidarity with Ukraine. Last year, South Korea sent non-lethal supplies to Ukraine, including body armour and helmets. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen met Indian Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman. The two leaders met on the sidelines of a G20 meeting. Yellen said that the U.S. and India are partnering to create an investment platform that aims to reduce capital costs and boost private investment for energy transitions. Sitaraman said she is looking forward to furthering bilateral interests through new investment opportunities. The youth unemployment rate in China has reached an all-time high. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, unemployment among Chinese youth jumped to a record 21.3% in June. Overall, urban unemployment was a little over 5%. This comes as the world's second largest economy grew just 0.8% in three months. New Zealand Prime Minister Chris Hipkins has said that the Pacific region is becoming more contested and less secure as China is becoming more assertive. Hipkins outlined the country's need to work with like-minded partners while still engaging with Beijing. China is New Zealand's largest trading partner. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida held meetings with Saudi Arabian leaders in the city of Jeddah. On Sunday, Saudi Arabia said that it's committed to securing oil supplies for Japan. The two countries agreed to continue cooperation on clean hydrogen and recycled carbon fuels. Saudi Arabia will keep supplying its crude oil to Okinawa's government oil reserves in southern Japan. Pakistan is likely to hold general elections in November. The country's Prime Minister, Shahbaz Sharif, has said that his government will hand over the reins to the caretaker setup set, uh, next month. In Pakistan, general elections are required to be held under the supervision of a neutral caretaker government to ensure a level playing field for all political parties. A shooting attack took place near the Jewish settlement of Tekoa in the occupied West Bank on Sunday. Reports say that four Israelis have been wounded in the attack. This comes just days after Israel launched its biggest operation in the occupied West Bank in years. At least 12 Palestinians and one Israeli soldier were killed in the operation. Another shooting incident has taken place in the U.S. state of Georgia. Authorities are looking for a man who killed four people in a suburban neighborhood in Hampton. Police say that the 40-year-old suspect, Andre Longmore, is believed to be armed and dangerous. 
Authorities are offering a $10,000 reward for any information leading to the arrest of the suspect. Iran has resumed hijab patrols by police officials. In the past, police officials specializing in hijab regulations patrolled streets across the country. However, large-scale anti-hijab protests broke out in Iran after the death of 22-year-old Masa Amini last September. The police had ceased hijab patrolling operations, but they have now been reinstated. In climate news, South Korean President Yoon suk yeol has blamed the response to floods across the country for the deaths of dozens of people. He said that local authorities had failed to follow rules as they dealt with, with torrential rains. At least 40 people have died in recent floods, while nine others are still missing. In the U.S., New York's governor, Kathy Hochul, has said that some areas of the state have been upgraded from a flood watch to a flood warning. She has warned citizens in vulnerable areas to stay indoors. Parts of the northeastern United States have been inundated with rain over the last week. The U.S. Weather Agency has warned of more incoming rain. In the U.S. state of Pennsylvania, at least four people have been swept away and killed by a flash flood. Rescuers have said they're searching for another three people. This includes a nine-month-old boy, his two-year-old sister and an adult woman. Scientists are concerned about the impact of rising temperatures in the Florida Keys. The Florida Keys region is home to a vibrant and diverse coral reef tract in the U.S. The extreme heat has triggered coral bleaching. This leads to coral expelling their color, which leaves them pale and vulnerable. Coral reefs create homes for millions of species of marine life and support ocean food webs. Meteorologists have warned that Europe is likely to witness more heat. Temperatures are expected to hit record highs across the south. Hot weather alerts have been issued for over a dozen cities. In Greece, the entrance to its famous Acropolis has been closed to protect tourists from the scorching sun. Meanwhile, in Italy, people cooled off in Lake Garda and the sea by the Sicilian city of Palermo. Some visitors said they noticed that it was hotter than past years. The country has issued hot weather red alerts for 16 cities. Italy has been experiencing scorching temperatures for several days. In Spain, at least 4,000 people have been evacuated as a forest fire burned out of control on La Palma Island. It started in the early hours of Saturday in a wooded area in the north of the island in the Canaries. The fire has destroyed at least 13 houses and affected more than 4,000 hectares of land. Smoke from raging wildfires has covered the city of Edmonton in western Canada. About 24 million acres have already burned across the country since May. In the city of Quebec, the Canadian military is being deployed to help with emergency evacuations. Canada is on track for its worst ever wildfire season. Now for business news, Russian officials are reportedly being asked to quit using iPhones. This was after Russia accused Apple of helping the US conduct espionage operations. From July 17th, employees at Russia's trade ministry will no longer be allowed to use iPhones on the job. The state oil company Rostec will also follow suit. However, Russia's Federal Security Service has provided no evidence to support its espionage claim. Meanwhile, Moscow has taken control of French yogurt maker Danone's Russian subsidiary. It has also taken over beer company Carlsberg's stake in a local brewer. This is according to a decree signed by Russian President Vladimir Putin. It said that foreign-owned stakes in the companies would be put under the quote-unquote temporary management of the government property agency. India is looking to seal a deal with Indonesia for bilateral trade in domestic currency. 
the countries are also looking to expand the scope of digital payments. This could bring in the use of India's transaction service, Unified Payments Interface or UPI, between the two countries. Taipei-based Foxconn is in talks with the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company and Japan's TMH Group. This is reportedly to set up a semiconductor fabrication unit in India. Foxconn may also sign an agreement with Switzerland's ST Microelectronics or America's Global Foundries for a technology partnership. The development comes after the Taiwanese company exited a $20 billion chip-making joint venture with India's Vedanta. According to reports, cryptocurrency exchange Binance has let go of more than a thousand employees in recent weeks. These layoffs are taking place just days after Binance was hit by a wave of executive exits. US regulators have been aggressively clamping down on the company's alleged illegal activities. The layoffs also come at a time when the crypto industry's future in the US market is uncertain. Tesla has built its first Cybertruck after a delay of two years. Elon Musk, the CEO of the electric vehicle maker, first introduced the Cybertruck in 2019. However, since then, the production of the vehicle was repeatedly delayed, citing shortages in components. The debut of the futuristic-looking pickup truck comes ahead of the company's second quarter earnings results. Meanwhile, Elon Musk has said that Twitter's Twitter's cash flow remains negative. He said that this is because of a 50% drop in advertising revenue and a heavy debt load. Earlier in March, Musk said that he expected the company to see positive cash flow in June. However, he now says, and I quote, July is a bit more promising. Norway's Data Protection Authority will fine Facebook owner Meta Platforms over privacy breaches. The company will be charged about $100,000 per day from August 4th to November 3rd. That is, unless it takes preventive action. Norway has told Meta that it cannot use user data like physical locations to target advertisements at them. A US appeals court has rejected the country's antitrust regulator's request to pause Microsoft's purchase of game maker Activision Blizzard. Earlier, the U.S. Federal Trade Commission asked a judge to pause the deal. This was due to concerns that the purchase would hamper competition in the gaming sector. Meanwhile, Microsoft has signed an agreement to keep the game Call of Duty on Sony's PlayStation console for at least 10 years. This will be even after Microsoft acquires game developer Activision Blizzard. The deal could further raise concerns surrounding the deal's impact on competition. The FTC was concerned that Microsoft would have the incentive to prevent rivals like Sony having access to Activision's games. Moving to sports, Australia has retained the women's ashes after beating England by three runs in the second one-day match. The win gave Australia an 8-6 lead in the multi-format series, guaranteeing they will return home with the Ashes. With just one more match left to play, England has no chance to take the Ashes this year. Argentine football legend Lionel Messi has signed for US soccer club Inter Miami until 2025. Messi is expected to make his debut next Saturday when Miami will host Mexico's Cruz Azul in their league's cup opener. The seven-time Ballon d'Or winner will hold a franchise player spot in the club. A franchise player is an athlete who is considered the best player of a team. Harry Maguire has been removed from the captain's position at Manchester United. Maguire was named captain by former manager Ole Gunnar Solskjaer six months after he joined Man United in 2019. The centre-back took to his Twitter handle to announce that he has been removed from this position after discussions with the club's current manager, Eric Ten Hag. Chelsea have completed the signing of Brazilian footballer Angelo Gabriel from Santos. The 18-year-old has signed a long-term contract with the club However, the terms of the deal are yet to be revealed. 
According to reports, Chelsea paid almost $17 million for Gabriel. Tennis world number one Carlos Alcaraz won his first Wimbledon title after defeating Novak Djokovic in the finals. The 20-year-old Spaniard won a five-set final to claim the men's singles title. He claimed his first Grand Slam last year after winning the US Open. Novak Djokovic, a seven-time Wimbledon champion, broke down in tears after the defeat. The Czech Republic's Marketa Vondrusova won the Wimbledon women's singles title on Saturday. She beat Tunisia's Ons Jabeur in the finals to clinch the trophy. The 24-year-old made history by becoming the first unseeded woman to win Wimbledon since 1963. Shea Su Wei and Barbara Strisova secured their second Wimbledon women's doubles. The Taiwan-Czech duo also emerged victorious together in 2019. This time they defeated third seeds Storm Hunter and Elise Mertens to lift the trophy. India's Lakshya Sen was knocked out of the US Open in the men's singles category. Uh, this is in the sport of badminton. He lost, the reigning, lost to the reigning All England champion Li Shi Feng of China. Sen had defeated the Chinese shuttler to win the Canada Open title last week. In athletics, India's Avinash Sable has qualified for the Paris Olympics 2024. The achievement comes after he finished sixth in the men's 3,000-meter steeplechase event at the Diamond League meet in Poland. Sable is the first track athlete from India to qualify for the Paris Olympics. Norway's Jacob Ingebrigtsen has uh, set a new European record at the Silesia Diamond League in Poland. The 22-year-old broke his own European 1,500-meter record by 0.81 seconds. Ingebrigtsen is now all set to compete in the upcoming World Athletics Championship in Budapest next month. On to entertainment now, singer Taylor Swift has become the first woman ever to have four albums in the top 10 of the US album chart simultaneously. Her re-recorded album, Speak Now, Taylor's version, made its debut at number one on the Billboard 200. It joins three other albums of hers in the top 10. Her, her other albums in the top 10 are Midnight, Lover and Folklore. K-pop band BTS member Jungkook recently released his first official solo single, Seven. It features American rapper Lotto and actor Han So Hee. Seven went straight to number one with more than 15 million streams on the daily top song Global. Jungkook described Seven as a summer song that has an addictive melody with a warm sound of acoustic guitar. K-pop band Blackpink's member Jenny Kim recently opened up about the downside of living a K-pop idol's life in South Korea. Jenny Kim joined singer Dua Lipa on her, her podcast. She revealed that being a K-pop artist has restricted many things in her life, which made her scared. The singer added, and I quote, I want to break more boundaries for people in my culture. In a recent interview, film director Christopher Nolan compared the Manhattan Project to the current race to develop artificial intelligence. The Manhattan Project was an effort made in the Second World War era to develop the first ever nuclear weapons. Nolan said, and I quote, Oppenheimer is coming at a time when there are a lot of new technologies that people start to worry about the unintended consequences of. He added that the leaders in the field of AI see this moment as their Oppenheimer moment. James Cameron has denied rumours that he'll be making a film or a series on Ocean Gate's Titan submersible disaster. Cameron said, and I quote, I don't respond to offensive rumours in the media usually, but I need to now. I am not in talks about an Ocean Gate film, nor will I ever be. 
In June this year, the Ocean Gate submersible tragedy shocked the world. A submersible carrying five people to explore the Titanic wreckage lost communication with support vessels and eventually imploded, killing all on board. U.S. President Joe Biden has voiced his support for the ongoing strike by the Writers Guild of America. Biden says he hopes that the writers get the fair deal that they deserve as soon as possible. Senator Bernie Sanders has also come out in support of Hollywood writers. He said wealthy studio executives would rather see workers lose their housing than pay them what they deserve. Disney has begun production on its latest live-action remake of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. However, the movie is already facing backlash for being too woke. Leaked images of the live-action remake show the titular character being played by a Hispanic woman. The dwarves have been depicted by actors of different races, genders and heights. A Disney spokesperson claimed that the images were fake. They later clarified that the images are from the production, but not official images released by Disney. American socialite Kylie Jenner and her former best friend Jordan Woods were spotted leaving a restaurant together in Los Angeles. This comes four years after they had a public falling out. Jenner and Woods used to be close friends. However, their friendship ended in 2019 when news broke that Kylie's sister Khloe Kardashian's then-boyfriend Tristan Thompson cheated on her with Woods. A month after the news broke, Woods shared her side of the story in a tell-all interview. The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Kyle, uh, Kyle Richards is celebrating one year of being alcohol-free, saying she never felt better. Richards shared the news on Instagram with a selfie captioned, a number of things led to the decision to put down the bottle. The reality TV star has been making headlines for the turbulent relationship with her husband, Mauricio Umansky. Actor and singer Jane Birkin has been found dead in her house in Paris. The actor died at the age of 76. She was called the 1960s wild child and became a beloved figure in France. Birkin was best known for her song, Je t'aime moi non plus. She was a vocal supporter of women's and LGBTQ rights.